Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there, and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube, and you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Patient tonight, Audrey, his brother is saying they're looking for answers. Right, and police shot and killed that man exactly two floors down from where I'm standing right now here at the Martyr Station. It all happened outside of a train platform. Now the family of that man is demanding details from investigators. Just a warning, some of the images you are about to see in this report are disturbing. It's not fair. DeAndre Bailey got the call late Friday evening. His 23-year-old brother, Osiris Bennett, shot and killed by police at the North Avenue Martyr Station. This is definitely, like, broken us all. According to police, two plainclothes martyr officers spotted Osiris with a marijuana cigarette at around 4.30 Friday afternoon. Police say the officers tried to confront Osiris, but he ran. A struggle then ensued. The individual produced a handgun and pointed it at one of the... Uh, officers. Uh, that second uh, uh, plainclothes officer backed up, uh, engaged the suspect and shot. Monday, a witness gave me this video he recorded with his cell phone. We blurred the more graphic parts for TV. The witness asked I not use his name or show his face for this report, but he says he never heard the officers identify themselves. They rushed him. They um didn't identify themselves or nothing. They was tussling with the guy, you know. He was like, why y'all doing this? As with any police-involved shooting, the GBI is now handling the case. Monday afternoon, I reached out to the GBI and asked investigators whether the two officers announced themselves at any time during the encounter with Osiris. In a statement, the GBI said in part, quote, we don't have anything to add to our original statement right now. The investigation is active and ongoing. DeAndre says his brother suffered from mental health issues and believes Osiris was scared when confronted by officers. If two random people who are coming at you and you don't know they're police officers, what else are you? Okay, you've seen it. This young man, Osiris Bennett, 23 years of age. Now, let's just take the information that has been made available to the public so far. Now, this information can also be flawed, but we're going to use that, okay? Because at the end of the day, I'm so confident that I know what happened in this situation here. I'm jumping all the way out the window. And if I'm wrong when you follow this story, come back. I don't think you will. I, I'm so sure that this was an unjustifiable shooting, an unjustifiable death. This young man's life was taken unjustly. And I do believe that this is a situation where the police created a scenario or an encounter where they can say that they are justified in using deadly force. I'm so sure about that. Now, you can go check my previous videos on this channel about use of force, and I get into how there are always gray areas in the Department of Justice use of force, and that gray area is usually mo motivated by racism. That's one thing that they do not tell you in the use of force. They're like, it's, okay, this, 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 and this, but no, no. Personal beliefs do play into the use of force. So anyway, this young man, Osiris, 23 years old, he's at the Marta train station at around 4 o'clock, right? Around 4 p.m. The time needs to be taken into consideration in this matter right here as well, and I'll tell you why. So they said that Osiris decided to smoke a blunt or a mar marijuana cigarette, as they say, whatever, in front of two plain clothes or undercover officers. Okay, because I'm getting two different ones in the media. I'm getting plain clothes and I'm getting undercover. Two plain clothes or undercover officers approach him and they tell him to put it out and they try to give him a ticket for simple possession. Okay. Now, when they made this old counter with Osiris Bennett, they say he tried to pull away after they showed their identification and at some point, the officers took him to the, took him to the ground. The chief of police said at some point, Osiris Bennett 
pulled out a gun and these plainclothes officers shot Osiris Bennett, taking his life. Okay, you see that there was a witness there that said he never once heard the officers identify themselves during this encounter. The witness said they rushed him. They, they didn't identify themselves. They were tussling with the guy and he was like, why are you doing this? Okay, that's what the witness who was there that does not want to be identified said. Now, I do believe that this is a case of some young, immature, overzealous police officers who lack social skills, you know, most likely rookie police officers, still on socially awkward bozo time mixed with police school training mode, which means they still don't know how to think. And you take that and mix in with the fact that a lot of these police officers who come out of training or a lot of police officers are socially awkward bozos. You could talk to anybody who was a police officer who knows they would tell you. OK. And I do believe this is why they took this took this young man out of here unjustly. OK, so just based off of the time that this happened, this assignment, these were not experienced police officers. OK, we know that three o'clock shift walking around the train station. They said it was around four o'clock when this happened. That's afternoon shift still early on the shift. It could have possibly been day work overtime. But anyway, walking around at the Marta station at this time, I guarantee you these were rookie, young, socially awkward, bozo police officers who were not that far out of a training. Now, first thing we need to know, this is what we need to know about the situation. Were they plain clothes or were they undercover? Very important because I'm getting two things. That part is very important. Plain clothes or undercover? Because if they were undercover, what are you doing blowing your cover for a simple marijuana possession. What are you doing blowing your cover? If you're undercover, your job is to be undercover. Why would you blow your cover for a simple marijuana possession? Now, that's only if they're undercover. Once you go up to a subject and you identify yourself as a police officer, you're no longer undercover. You blew your cover. Now, also, if you claim to be undercover and you didn't want to blow your cover, this means that you had to approach Osiris without identifying yourself. If you're undercover... And you, you didn't want to blow your cover. You had to approach him without identifying yourself as a police officer because if you do identify yourself, you blow your cover. This changes the entire dynamic if that's what happened. Okay? Now, you just become two people approaching me aggressively, all in my business. You know, that's, that's called beef. This could be high school beef. He could think it's neighborhood beef. He could have got jumped three years ago and think, y'all the people who did this. He could have did something and think, oh, y'all y'all trying to, it could have been beef in Walmart. What is it? Who are you approaching me? That, that, that's what people got to understand. Who are you? Okay. Now, because if you're undercover and you don't want to blow that cover and you're approaching me, you just somebody who just might want to fight me. You know, hurt me, shoot me. It's dangerous out here. Now. If you're undercover and you come at me in order for me to know who you are, you have to blow your cover and show me identification. That's point blank, period. So that's the whole undercover thing. Plain clothes and undercover are two different things. Now, if you say you are plain clothes officer, right? If you say you're plain clothes, just say they're plain clothes officer. So even in your plain clothes, when you approach me, you have to make it be known that you are a police officer in plain clothes by doing what? identifying yourself and showing identification. Did you identify as a plainclothes officer? Yes or no? The witnesses, the witness is it, the witness sound like sounds on point. The witness sounds on point. Just don't come up to me talking about put that blunt out, put that marijuana out. How will somebody respond? Who, who, who the F are you? Who that's how people respond. Who are you coming up to me in plain clothes? Because you know these people were in plain clothes. The question is, were they plain clothes officers or were they undercover? But we know they weren't plain clothes. Who the F are you coming up to me? Who are you? OK, so now after they approach him. They say they say that Osiris just started fighting them. OK, now I do believe that they're lying about that. I, I believe they're lying about that part. OK, but let's just say suppose he did. Suppose he just started fighting him, fighting them because there's two of them. If he started fighting them, he started fighting them based off of how they approached him and how they made the encounter. That goes back to identifying yourself. OK, and I don't think that these two plain clothes or undercover people approached Osiris and identified themselves as police officers and said, 
Hey, you cannot smoke that in here. You got to put that out and we're going to issue you a citation, sir. I don't think that's what happened. I'm so sure that that's not what happened here. Just like the witness said, they approached him. They didn't identify themselves. They started grabbing. And Osiris was saying, why are you doing this to me? Okay, then they say Osiris pulled out a gun. I don't believe that part either. I don't believe that part. I'm not saying that he didn't have a gun. This is Georgia, but let's just say he did pull out a gun. Let's say Osiris pulled out a gun. Now, okay, how did you approach him? Two people. What did y'all say? Again, it goes back to how they identified themselves, okay? Was this beef or was it police? Did Osiris think it was beef? Because beef is a reason to pull out a gun. I don't, I don't believe that these two approached this young man as police officers. Then he tried to fight you and then he pulled out a gun. No, if he did pull out a gun, which I don't believe, but if he did, if he did, that goes back to the situation that I spoke about earlier on this channel. It's how law enforcement can approach a normal situation that can end with a simple, okay, see you later. Okay, do you understand? Okay, you can't do that anymore. A simple situation that can end like that, and they flip it into where they shooting 30 times and stuff like that, to where they can use deadly force and make it look justified. You know what I'm saying? So in a situation like this, let's say they approach Osiris. They didn't identify. They start hand gesturing, talking with their hands and stuff like that, you know, Osiris is like, who are you? He starts drifting away because it's beef. Possibly in his mind, he don't know who they are. They grab him. Now Osiris wrestles back like, get your hands off me. You know what I'm saying? He's mugging him back or whatever. Osiris falls. Gun falls out the waistband or whatever, out the bag, whatever. The gun falls out. They shoot him. Oh, he had a gun. That's why we shot him. That's what they'll present to the people. Oh, he had a gun. That's why he shot him. But why y'all shoot? So what? He had a gun. Was he supposed to have the gun or not? Then, who were you when you approached him, which led to the tussle? Who were you? See, what, what, were, you some, were you some white supremacists? Were you just two white people? Were you some black people who we thought might have had beef with? Were you both? I don't, yeah, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? See, that's where the Department of Justice use of force is presented as if it's the rule and that's it. See, they take the use of deadly force and they present it as if it's the rule. But they don't say that personal feelings and belief come into play quite often when it comes to the use of deadly force, which is whether a police officer can use his firearm on, an on a person, on a subject or not. Okay? It becomes a, okay, that's what happened, but why did it happen? And when it comes to black people, they like to get rid of the why did it happen part and just say, well, look, he ran. Well, look, she fought. Look, he had a gun. Look, he had a warrant. It don't work like that. That's not justice, yo. That's not justice. Tell us why the initial encounter with this subject was made. Why was this subject confronted, regardless of who it is? What would a reasonable thinking person in that situation do? The entire story. Give us all of it. See, that's where the use of force gray areas are usually fueled by personal beliefs of the officer in which these personal beliefs are usually racism. That's just what it is, yo. Something else to take from this story, people. I'm just going to go off with what's in the media right now because who knows the truth yet. But they say Osiris tried to smoke a blunt or some marijuana, whatever. I don't know if he did. I don't know if he has anxiety, if he has a medicinal cart, whatever. I don't know that. I have no idea, you know, where, where you can medicate in the state of Georgia. I don't know. But this whole marijuana thing in the public, this whole new marijuana thing, and it's not for us, y'all. It's not for black people, just like alcoholism. It's, it's not for us. It's a setup. Black people, you, you don't, and I'm not saying Osiris did it because I don't know. You know what I'm saying? This is just the story they have. The beginning of the story sounds like it may make some sense, but 
black people. Don't go thinking that just because it's some kind of smoke rules or some kind of smoke state or you have a medicinal car that is safe for you. You know what I'm saying? Them laws and them rules were made for white people. If it was about you, it would still be completely illegal. OK, if it was about black people, it would still be completely all that new smoke stuff and all that stuff they got going on. That's for white people. You have to think like a black person in America. It's not safe, regardless of what they say. It's not safe for a black person to do anything that attracts law enforcement to us. Being black is enough. We don't need more. And something like that is not necessary. It's not like it's like, OK, I'm black. But now I got to walk with this cane. Yeah, I'm attracting law enforcement, but you need that cane. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it's like it's not like, OK, I'm black, but I got to drive this car and it got tenant windows. I need this car to get to work and get home. It's not like that. This is OK, I'm black, but yeah, I'm going to smoke this blunt here because they got these laws. No, no, no. You don't need to smoke that blunt there, yo. Them laws are not forced. I'm just saying, yo. Use the process of elimination and just, you know, do your whole risk assessment. You don't need to do that. It's certain things that we need to do that's going to attract attention to us in addition to being black. But drinking, smoking, nah. You just got to be more strategic when you're black, you know. But I hope the family of Osiris Bennett finds out what happened. I'm so sure that these officers are wrong in taking his life. I'm, 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 I'm 99.999 percent sure, you know. But, you know, but I almost forgot, yo, the young man who was on the news who claimed to be Osiris Bennett's brother, the young man who was on the news. Listen, listen, you probably on YouTube. Don't entertain these people. As of now, nobody has to know that Osiris had any mental issues or whatever you may consider a mental issue because that's going to be blown up. You know, that doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Um, as a black person, that's only going to be used against him and be used against your family. In some cases, mental illness may matter, but not here. Don't bring that up. Don't go on the TV talking to these people. They don't care if you cry. They don't care about none of that. Don't bring up anything about him that may not be looked at him, that, that may be looked at in a good light as far as his character or his personal issues or whatever. The bottom line in this situation here is were they justified in taking Osiris's life or not? Period. All that other stuff, don't go talking to these people. You know, the, you know the media, they already tried their thing with the whole tarnish the image thing. And I noticed as of yet, they haven't provided a mugshot or any negative information concerning Osiris. You know, they already and from the beginning when they deal with black people, what they try to do is they try to get it in people's heads that they start building something, a case about this person's character, regardless of what happened to him. They have they don't have any of this stuff on him yet. So it's probably not out there. So leave that alone. You know, what I mean, they're going to try to sway the minds as much as they could anyway. I hope that the family of Osiris gets justice. Easy.